Just hours after Germany's austerity package was agreed, demonstrators were on the streets in central Berlin. For years, the unemployed unions and leftist groups have been gathering here to protest against welfare cuts. People here say the German government measures unfairly target the country's poorest citizens, confirming their worst fears. I'm outraged. It's what I expected from this government, to take money from people who already have next to nothing. They're worried about social unrest, but we're justified in standing up for ourselves. This is just the beginning. Their whole agenda still isn't on the table. This is set to be a major test for the country's ruling center-right coalition. Seven months ago, Angela Merkel's conservatives joined forces with the Free Democrats. The alliance that once promised an economic turnaround is now on the defensive. Despite all the difficult decisions, I still say it was necessary for our country, even though they were tough hours. You can imagine what an incredible strain it is to put such a package into place. That package proposes savings of 13 billion euros next year. That will mean cuts to welfare benefits and parental allowance, and a reduction in the number of public servants. With Europe deep in crisis, the German government hopes to set an example in fiscal responsibility. An austerity package like this has symbolic meaning, especially on the European level. So the German government, the coalition of CDU and FDP, is trying to implement all the measures Europe is calling for from Greece, Spain, Portugal and Italy. The private sector has also been asked to contribute, with new taxes on financial transactions, aviation fuel and nuclear power plants. But many of those measures are still tied up in Parliament. Ten years ago, Hans Eitel was also called upon to deliver an unpopular austerity package. He was finance minister then, in a coalition of Social Democrats and Greens. He says if politicians want the people to swallow billions of euros of cuts, there has to be a clear course. The people want to see solid fiscal policies. They don't want to be scared of the future, which they are, when we run up too many debts. But they also have reason to fear the future if our schools aren't good enough or our childcare facilities aren't good enough. So that has to be balanced out. Lobby groups might be pressuring from all sides, but politicians need to have the courage to withstand that, and they should. But so far, the center-right coalition has struggled to present a united front. There's been no fresh start for the coalition. A fresh start would look completely different. It would be more dynamic, and you'd be getting more of a sense of direction. Right now, Angela Merkel might find these robots at the Berlin Air Show easier to control than members of her own party. Some in the CDU want the government to raise taxes on the wealthy. As far as we know, the CDU made this suggestion during the negotiations. It was blocked by the Free Democrats, who are still having trouble facing realities in this area. Rhetorical muscle flexing is no replacement for content. The coalition is giving us the impression that it can't get anything done. Merkel herself is under pressure from within. Some in her own party say the Free Democrats are having too much influence on policy. If you look at the history of the CDU, you see there's a strong tendency to rebel against a chairperson or chancellor when the approval ratings start to plummet. But the worst may not be over for the chancellor and her coalition. The opposition and protest groups are promising stiff resistance to the austerity package in the weeks to come.